Despite being a disgraced former president who was sent to jail, Jacob Zuma is turning out to be the political wild card in South Africa's current election. The 81-year-old has been urging people to turn their backs on the ruling ANC, led by his successor, President Cyril Ramaphosa. His message seems to have resonated. To brief us more on the matter, I spoke with Darren Taylor, our reporter in Johannesburg. Well, uh, the story in this election so far is uh, basically the revenge that uh, former President Jacob Zuma has has visited upon the ANC. The party he once said, uh, and I'll quote, uh, will rule until Jesus comes back. Uh, Now, Zuma allegedly stole billions of rands during his presidency between 2009 and 2018. Now he's stealing millions of votes from the party he once loved, until, of course, it removed him from power a few years back and replaced him with his uh, sworn enemy, uh, Cyril Ramaphosa. Uh, late last year, Zuma formed the Umkonto Sizwe or MK party. He vowed to destroy an ANC he said had lost touch with the black majority and was in league with what he called white imperialist capitalists. He seems to have done exactly this in his home province of KwaZulu-Natal, where his new party is set to obliterate the ANC from from power. What is really surprising is that analysts and experts predicted that Zuma's MK would only do well in his home province of KwaZulu-Natal. But here we are, and uh, MK is holding nationally at the moment 12% of, of the vote, which is surpassing the radical economic freedom fighters, the EFF as South Africa's uh, third biggest uh, party. Now remember that MK is barely six months old. Uh, It just shows the immense pull factor that Zuma has. He's almost a Donald Trump-like figure over here in South Africa in that despite the many accusations leveled against him, all the controversy, the fact that he's been in jail, his popularity just grows. The 81-year-old Zuma has been urging people to turn their backs on the ANC led by his successor, President Cyril Ramaphosa. He wants to dethrone Ramaphosa. He doesn't want power, right? Very mischievous hand he's uh, actually throwing into the election. He, He is an animal of the ANC's intelligence service. During the apartheid years, he headed the ANC's intelligence service. And during his presidency, what he did was co-opt all of the security services, put his people in there, and basically turn the intelligence and security services into a a huge beast that would protect him and his uh, minions. And allegedly, using that as a front, as a cover, they got away with all sorts of crimes. They allegedly stole billions of of dollars. And um, uh, policy-wise... He seems to have com- completely turned his back on the ANC in that he, he's now uh, copying uh, the economic freedom fighters, the EFF. Uh, ironically, uh, many analysts are predicting that uh, the EFF and MK will eventually merge. And as things stand, uh, uh, that party, if they merge, has a chance of supplanting the democratic alliance. And it's falling. So talk to us a little about that. Of course, world markets and economies and investors don't like uncertainty. And now we can say what we will about all the ANC's failures in the past, and there are many, uh, but there was democratic stability in South Africa. Now, with the probability that the ANC will have to partner with a big party, uh, maybe even uh, Zuma's MK or Julius Malema's EFF, or maybe even both, Um, to stay in power uh, really has markets in jitters. Um, A coalition of any kind would bring uncertainty to governance in South Africa. Uh, Markets do not like uncertainty and instability. That was reporter Darren Taylor talking to me from Johannesburg. The African Union has opened the floor for aspirants of the upcoming race for the chairperson and deputy positions of the Continental Bodies Commission to file their papers or drop out in favor of rivals. 
As parents are to submit their CVs to their respective countries, statements of vision and how they intend to address emerging challenges on the continent. It is the first step for aspirants to show intent to serve as leaders of the African Union Secretariat. But it will not be the most difficult. Four aspirants have already announced publicly they will seek to contest. They include Kenya's opposition leader Lyle Odinga, the Djiboutian foreign minister Mahmoud Ali Yusuf, Somalia's former foreign minister Fawzia Yusuf Adam, and former Seychelles vice president Vincent Meliton. Their countries had already backed them. Under the current African Union rules on, regu uh, on regulations, the seat for the African Union Commission chairperson will only be contested by countries in the eastern region, while the deputy will be contested by the North, Northern African region. Depending on whether a male or female candidate wins the chairperson seat, the deputy will then come from the opposite gender. According to an election notice publicized last week, the African Union said candidates will file applications through their member states, but the final candidates on the ballot will be determined after a lengthy procedure that will also see them vetted by a panel of experts before the polls in February 2025. All the eight opposite all the eight positions of the commission, chairperson, deputy, and six commissioners are up to four grabs. But each region will be given slots based on what leaders agreed on as a fair principle of inter-regional rotation. It means the six commissioners will fall to the remaining regions of South, Central, and Western. Each region determines its own procedure for nominating candidates for the portfolios for which it is eligible. The notice says the region then hands in its list to the panel of experts by August 6th. Only names of candidates submitted by the region will be considered in the pre-selection process undertaken by the panel of eminent Africans. Further, only member states that are not under African Union sanctions are f allowed to submit candidates. It means the countries currently suspended for committing coups, including Sudan, Gabon, Niger, Mali, Burkina Faso, and Guinea, are ineligible to compete for any slots. Although qualifications for each of the slots had already been created under the rules of the African Union, the panel of eminent persons says it has developed job profiles and competency.